Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this, the third week of Gleanings of Hope Evangelistic Series here at Central Jamaica Conference. A special welcome to those who are viewing on WatchCJCLive.com or YouTube and Facebook pages, and also the various churches platforms across the conference. If you are new here, the drill is simple. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. We also invite you to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at CJCSDA. And you will also see those links posted in the chat. The CJC, Central Jamaica Conference Online Church, is all about keeping you connected during changing times. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you this evening for the opportunity that we have to come into your presence. We ask you, sweet Holy Spirit, that you will take away all distractions, that you will help us, Lord, to focus only on you. Oh, Lord, we come this evening expecting a blessing. Please do not disappoint us. We pray, dear Lord, that as we listen to the sermons, to the words of encouragement and admonition, and as we share in the songs of praise that will be lifted up, that our hope will be renewed in you. For we pray and ask in Jesus' name, amen and amen. This evening's worship experience promises to be uplifting. We will hear music ministry from the group Shaz from Spanish Town Seventh-day Adventist Church. They will be leading out in our praise and worship session. Brother Andrew Francis from the Portmore Seventh-day Adventist Church, he will bring us a special song. Pastor Keneal Morgan, premier pastor as it relates to the Possibilities Ministry and pastor of the Deaf Church in Portmore, will do the special feature this evening, The Reason I Obey. And the Pearl of Hope will be offered by Elder Anthony Myers, also from the Portmore Seventh-day Adventist Church. For the past two weeks, we have been encouraged, edified, and empowered by the spirit-filled sermons shared by Pastor Barrington McLean. Tonight, as we move into third gear, we'll be shifting things a bit. The speaker for tonight is the dynamic, youthful, talented, and powerful Pastor Kevin Barnaby, senior pastor of the Portmore Seventh-day Adventist Church and the Youth and Music Ministries Director of Central Jamaica Conference. Pastor Barnaby is married to Sister Jessica this evening. As he shares the word of God, I ask that you will pray for his ministry, that you will pray for him, that the Lord will give him a double portion of his anointing so that the word will go forth with power and clarity. At this time, I know that Shaz is waiting and we will turn right over to them as they lead out in our praise and worship. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are about to go into our praise and worship segment. I do invite you to sing along with us, with us as we go through some songs. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My death to pay from the cross to the grave. 
from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name up. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My death you pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Majesty. One more time. Lord, I lift your name on high. Majesty. Worship His Majesty. Worship His Majesty. Unto Jesus. Unto Jesus. In your glory. So exalt, lift up on high the name of Jesus. Magnify, magnify, come glorify Christ Jesus the King. Majesty, majesty, worship His majesty. Jesus who died, Jesus who died, now glorified, King of all kings, King of all flow from his throne, unto his own, his hands and rain, flow from his throne. Shine, fill this land with the Father's glory. Blaze, Spirit, blaze, set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow, flow, river, flow. Flood the nation, flood the nation. Let it shine. 
let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. This is a light of mine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine. Evening, everyone. I am. Um... Good evening, everyone. I am Jean Leslie, a member of the Public Relations Committee of the WHEEL program. What is WHEEL, some of you might ask. WHEEL is an outreach arm of the Central Jamaica Conference, and it focuses on welfare, health, empowerment, education, and the local community. I'm going to tell you a little story about WHEEL, because you must have been hearing some about it already. But let me, just, let me just say one or two things, because experience for me is a very good teacher. What exactly do I know about WHEEL, and perhaps how can you get involved? Some time ago at my own church, we discovered that one of our senior members, more mature members, had a problem. The, the person lived in a house that was porous. You could stand below and look right through to the roof. And a number of us as master guides came together to see how we could provide assistance. And so we put together our own resources, resources from members of the church, and finally we had a shortfall. And then we approached Wheel. We completed the documentation, made the submission, and Wheel delivered 100%. I won't tell you exactly how much, but at that time, whatever the shortfall was, they gave everything. And the good thing, they weren't in the picture taking. You know, there are some times when you approach some organizations for funding. They come, they take pictures before, after, and during. For us as a group, we provided pre-photos. Images of what the building looked like at the time. They sent their project officer to do the due diligence, then made their contribution. With the only requirement that a, one of the members had to stand in as the project officer to see the project through to the end, and that was done, so the pictures were this, was thereafter provided. Now, another story I would share, experience again. There was uh, another member with a child who needed help for tests, and the and conference delivered, wheel delivered. The documents were submitted, and all the medical tests were paid for. Now, how can you get involved? You know about investment via Sabbath school, right? Where some of us would put forward our first fruits. Some of us get into other creative things like the $250 we save from paying our utilities early. And then at the end of the year, we'll put it forward. Now, that is your own covenant with God. Now, I am suggesting, brethren, that we make a group covenant, make a commitment to feed into the lives of others by putting aside, this year the promotion is $20 a day, only $20, $20 a day, and that amounts to about $600 or so for the month. And if you don't want to wait until the month and you choose to take it into your church's treasury weekly, they will accept it. Now, if you're like many others who embrace an anonymity, then you can go straight online and pay to Central Jamaica Conference by going to wheel.centralja.org and make your payment there. Another payment option is by way of the regular tithe envelope. Just put on it that you want your contribution to go to Wheel. I'm imploring you, I'm encouraging you, think Wheel this year. Invest in a pool of funds that will benefit not just one, not just two, but many. Have a good evening. So many 
many times I've questioned certain circumstances, things I could not understand. Many times in trials, weakness blurs my vision. In my frustration, it gets so out of hand. It's in those times I am reminded I've never been forsaken and I've never had to stand the test alone. But as I look at all the victories, God's spirit rises up in me and it's through the fire my weakness is made strong. never promised that the cross would not be heavy and the hill would not be hard to climb he never offered for victories without fighting but he said help would always come in time just remember where we're standing in the valley of decision and the adversary says give in just hold on for my god will show up and he will take you through the fire again listen i know within myself that i would surely perish but when I put my faith and my trust in God, He shields the flames again, again. He never promised that the cross would not be heavy and the hill would not be hard to climb. No, no, He never offered or victories without fighting but he said help would always come just in time just remember when you're standing in the valley of decision and the enemy that old devil says give in don't listen just hold on for my god will show up and he will take you through the fire again just hold on my god will show up and he will take you through the fire again It's for the favors that he shows and the joys that he bestows. When I think of the goodness that God has done for me, I can't do anything else but to obey him. And the psalmist put it this way, that he is our God. It is he who hath made us and not we ourselves. I'm not just sharing this out of lip service. But I know what God has done in my life. And because of what he has done in my life, I can't help but to obey him. He has been caring. He has been compassionate. He has been a good God. He has been a kind God. And my soul just cry out, hallelujah. And I obey him because he is my friend and he is my God. Won't you make him your God too? I know I obey him because he is my friend. and for your grace we are so grateful and we're so thankful 
for your love that you have bestowed upon us. We have this hope that burns within our heart. Hope of the coming of the Lord. You have organized this series, O oh Lord, Gleamings of Hope, evangelistic series. And you have put in place all the necessary things that we need for this gospel to go right across the length and breadth of this world. We have this hope that one day soon and very soon, our maker and our king will return. I pray, O oh Lord, that you will keep us faithful unto the end. You have laid your hands on your man servant to speak for you tonight. Lord, I pray that your sweet Holy Spirit will empower him. I pray that you will let your Holy Spirit possess him. Let him speak with clarity. Let him speak with authority. That as the words go forth right across the length and breadth of this world, persons will realize that they have a hope. And that hope is in King Jesus. Holy Father, continue to bless us. As we worship you, we pray in the mighty, matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen and amen.
Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Worthy is the Lamb. Won't you say amen, hallelujah. I just love good singing. I just love good gospel singing. And if you have been listening since evening, you would agree with me that we would have been tremendously blessed by these wonderful uh, ladies and gentlemen and also by our guest singer brother francis may i say good evening brothers and sisters good evening those who are watching online it's a joy to be connecting with you once more from the gleanings of hope evangelistic series allow me to take this opportunity to say thanks to our president pastor neville barrett for this opportunity to share i must also say thanks to director pastor barrington mclean for the past two weeks he has been doing an excellent job won't you say amen, amen. he did an exceptional and excellent job in preaching god's word and as a result of that many persons gave their hearts to jesus and i want to take this opportunity to say that people need the lord won't you say amen and i am so humbled this uh, this evening to be asked and given the opportunity to share God's word. I am so delighted to have with me in studio members and a pastor from the Portmore Seventh-day Adventist Church. Uh, you would have heard from pastor of the Deaf Church, the only pastor in the Central Jamaica Conference, the only pastor in the Jamaica Union Conference who can communicate effectively with the deaf community pastor we appreciate your ministry and i want to say thanks to my elder elder myers for having prayed that very special prayer it's just a joy to know that there is always a word for god's people won't you say amen so perhaps you have not yet shared the link i invite you once more just to take a little time and share that link because someone needs to hear a word of hope won't you say amen i have entitled what i hope to say for the next few minutes but b u t but perhaps you did not hear me i said but if you heard me correctly if you heard me clearly then i invite you to drop that word in the chat but may i invite you now to bow your heads with me wherever you are as we seek the lord in prayer heavenly father i desire now lord for you to do a special work in me and through me i pray lord that you will speak a word to me so that i will be able to speak it clear to those who listen to those who view this evening may your words lord do something extraordinary in our lives may our lives be transformed by the power of your word someone needs to be delivered lord someone needs healing tonight lord speak a word a word of hope we pray in Jesus' name amen and amen take your bibles with me or perhaps your smart devices and uh, let us explore a, a portion of god's word uh, second kings chapter 5 and we will read a few verses i believe that this uh, narrative this uh, pericope this story is quite uh, a familiar one but i want to spend a little time to remind you that the god that we serve is a god of hope won't you say amen so we go now to second kings chapter 5 and we will read from verse 1 through to 14 it's a little lengthy but i believe that it will be worth it all won't you say amen naaman now naaman captain of the host of the king of syria he was a great man with his master and honorable because by him the lord had given deliverance unto syria he was also a mighty man in valor. I want you to underline this word now. But he was a leper. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel a little maid. And she waited on Naaman's wife. And she said unto her mistress, Would God my Lord were with the prophet that is in Samaria, 
for he would recover him of his leprosy. And one in, one went in and told his Lord, saying, Thus and thus said the maid that is of the land of Israel. And the king of Syria said, Go to, go, and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. And he departed and took with him uh, ten talents of silver, six a thousand pieces of gold, and ten changes of raiment. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel, saying, Now, when this letter is come unto thee, behold, I have therewith sent Naaman my servant to thee, that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. And it came to pass when the king of Israel had read the letter that he rent his clothes and he said, Am I God to kill and to make alive that this man doth send unto me to recover a man of his leprosy? Wherefore consider, I pray you, and see how he seeketh a quarrel against me. And it was so when Elisha, the man of God, had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes that he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come now to me, and he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. But Naaman was wroth, and went away and said, Behold, I thought he will surely come out to me, and stand and call in the name of the Lord his God, and strike his hand over the place, and recover the leper. Are not Abana and Farpar, rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in rage. And his servants came near and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee to do some great thing, wouldst thou not have done it? How much rather then when he said to thee, Wash and be clean? Then went he down and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan according to the saying of the man of God and his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child and he was clean having read this passage I feel like we could just say the benediction and go home but I believe that the Lord still has a little extra word for us won't you say amen brothers and sisters but now, 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 Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, he was a great man with his master, an honorable man because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. The name Naaman comes from the Hebrew verb Naim, which means the delightful pleasant, uh, beautiful. It has the idea of being gracious or well-formed. His name undoubtedly suggests that he was at least handsome. Uh, perhaps, perhaps, ladies and gentlemen, uh, he was, we would say in our Jamaican expression, he was good-looking at least before the leprosy. The name Naaman, ladies and gentlemen, brought comfort to Syria but terror to serious enemies. He was a great man. He was a very important man. He was a public figure. He was a national figure. He wore several medals of bravery and victories won. But the Bible says, but he had leprosy. The Greek word for leprosy is lepra, which means to peel off like scales in other words the kind of health condition the kind of disease that Naaman was struggling with caused his skin to literally peel off ah oh, you can imagine that he was a living walking dead if you understand the expression as he walked from one place to the other his flesh was literally decomposing 
but he was still breathing. Are you listening to me? Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria. He was a great man with his master, an honorable man. Uh, because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was a mighty man in valor. But he was a leper. Leprosy, ladies and gentlemen, was a real dreadful and awful disease. It was considered to be the scourge of the offended deity. The ancient world will tell you that it is something bad a person would have done which would have brought down God's retributive judgment upon such a person. They believe that such a, a dreadful and awful affliction came only from the hands of God. They believe that leprosy was a punishment for sin. Leprosy is a severe case of psoriasis, eczema, ringworm, and skin cancer, all wrapped up into one dreadful and awful and painful affliction. Leprosy is caused by a slow-growing bacteria called Mycobacterium leprae. It affects uh, the, the nerves, the skin, and the eyes, the lining of the nose, and also the vocal cavity. Now, I want you to listen to me very well, because in those days, persons who suffered from such a dreadful and awful affliction had to warn the public of their presence. In other words, they had to shout to the top of their voice, unclean, unclean, I am unclean. But when the mucous membrane degenerated from the vocal cavity and the person could no longer speak, then a, a placard with a string attached to it would be placed around the person's neck. Listen to me carefully. Now, now if that placard with the string uh, I was left too long, uh, the placard and that string would wind its way into the decomposing flesh, partially severing the, the head from the body. I want you to picture, ladies and gentlemen, this great man of God, this great man of Syria, this great man of valor, suffering from such a dreadful and awful affliction. Now I want to make it abundantly clear that when I read this passage and when I examine uh, uh, the condition of Naaman, how powerful and how great a man he was, I, I learned something from this passage that sometimes we, we take a uh, life too seriously. Are we together? It, this, this verse helps me to, to humble myself. This, this, third, this verse teaches me to be patient. Uh, this verse teaches me not to think too highly about myself. Because ladies and gentlemen, as sure as night follows day, night can take, a, 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 let, me, let, me, let me say that again, as sure as night follows day, come on somebody, life can take a tailspin. Life can take a tailspin. So I want you to be careful how you treat others. I want you to be careful how you, how you, how you, how you connect with others. I want you to be careful how you, how you address others and how you relate to them. Because today you might be up, but tomorrow you might be down. Be careful. Picture in your minds right now this great man in valor. As he moves from one place to the other in his celestial palace. He leaves a trail of blood, pus, and a very foul odor in his path. The scent of rotten flesh are we together. I wish I could see all your faces right now, but something tells me that your facial expression was transformed just a few moments ago because what I would have described would have offended your delicate sensibilities, but I must uh, describe it for you because you need to know how God feels when he sees us covered with the leprosy of sin. Leprosy is a graphic physical picture of this the, the spiritual defilement of sin like leprosy sin is mortifying like leprosy sin is contaminating like leprosy sin is damaging so i want to say to some viewers this evening don't play with sin don't toy with sin don't entertain sin because sin will blind you like it did to samson it will bind you it will blind you and it will crush you Sin is ugly. 
Sin is incurable. Sin contaminates. Sin isolates. And sin degenerates. Let us not sin because Jesus didn't. So the sin inside is greater than the leprosy of the skin on the outside. It starts out as a spot that grows and festers until it takes over the whole body. But before you start pointing your finger at all the many persons who you know have some sins in their lives. May I remind you in Romans chapter 3 verse 22 to 25. For all have sinned. All have sinned. And come short of the glory of God. Life can take. Ladies and gentlemen listen to me well. A tailspin on you. If you don't believe me. Ask Willie Nelson, famed country singer and songwriter. And he will tell you that you one minute, you are making millions through music. Ah, you're making millions uh, through songwriting. But bad investment, poor management and bad advice can lead you into bankruptcy. Life can take a tailspin if you don't believe me. Ask one of the richest entrepreneurs ever lived, Steve Jobs. He will tell you that you can take 56 years to amass wealth and be declared a billionaire. But when his head touched a dying pillar, he will also tell you that you can employ someone to drive to fight for you. You can employ someone to make money for you. But when your head touch a dying pillar, you can't employ somebody to die for you. But I have good news today. I have good news this evening. Because when nothing else could help, when there was no one to die for me, Jesus died the death that I should have died. Won't you say amen? I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters. And I want you to listen to me well. Let us not behave uh, like we are so important. And everybody else who do not look like us. Everybody else who can't afford to dress like us. Everybody else who have not achieved uh, the, the things we have achieved. Uh, sometimes we walk as if everybody else is way down there. And we are way up there. But I want to remind somebody. That the God that I serve is no respecter of persons. Are you listening to me? If you are too high, he will bring you down. And if you are too low, he will lift you up. Don't you ever get too caught up with what you have achieved. And what you have accomplished to the extent where you think. You have the right now to treat everybody like they are a good for nothing and a nothing good. May I just remind you again, be careful. Let us love each other. Let us treat each other as kindly. Let us, let us, let us treat each other as we would love to be treated. Because today you might find yourself on the mountain top, but tomorrow you might find yourself in the valley. But I, I am so happy this evening to know that my God will be with me, will be with you wherever you go, won't you say amen? amen. But I want to say a little bit more. Because the Bible says Naaman was a great man with his master. He was an honorable man because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was a mighty man. But. Are you listening to me? I said but. I said but. But he was what? He was a leper. Now, now let me tell you something about this word but. Because but is a coordinating conjunction. It is used to introduce a phrase or clause contrasting with what has already been mentioned. It is used to nullify. It is used to abrogate. It is used to wipe out this three letter word. When it comes into a sentence, it wiped out what was said before. When but comes into your sentence, 
all your commendations are turned into condemnations. All the good things you have done is now wiped out by one bad thing that you would have done. But comes, ladies and gentlemen, to rob us of our dignity. Uh, but comes, ladies and gentlemen, to rob us of our future. Uh, but comes, ladies and gentlemen, to render us good for nothing and nothing good. You are listening to me tonight. You are watching on the various uh, platforms tonight. Not realizing that society has placed a butt in your life. If you don't believe me, listen how they talk about you. Oh, he's a handsome guy, but she sings well, but he is married, but he has a nice job, but they drive a nice car, but she has a beautiful face, but ladies and gentlemen, when but comes into your sentence, all your positivities are changed into negativities. I want you to follow me carefully. She has a pretty face. Positivity. But a heart like a devil. Negativity. He is a very handsome guy. Positivity. But he has a dirty character. Negativity. She sings well. Positivity. But notice that all the positivities are in front of the conjunction when but comes into your sentence you are hopeless when but comes into your sentence you are doomed for hell but tonight if i come by here to tell you how many buts are in your life then i would have been on the devil's mission but i'm not here on the devil's mission tonight i am here to tell you that just when but was getting ready to damn our souls in the pit of hell when sin injected its poisonous venom in the bloodstream of the whole human race god sent forth his son jesus dropped himself in the bosom of a virgin went through nine months gestation period and after nine months he detached himself from the placenta wall climbed down the birth canal and when his hour came ladies and gentlemen he got a hold of the sentence he reshuffled the sentence he said i can't leave the sentence the way it is and so he did something extraordinary with that sentence you see before jesus came into the sentence it used to read something like this righteousness exalts a nation but sin is a reproach to any man no no god couldn't jesus couldn't leave the sentence like that before he came into the sentence it used to read something like this a merry heart do it well like a medicine but a broken spirit dries up the bone notice that all the positivities are in front of the conjunction listen as i read a soft answer turneth away wrath that's positivity but a grievous uh but uh, a grievous words rather stir up anger ladies and gentlemen observe that all the positivities are in front of the conjunction now jesus stepped into the sentence he reshuffled the sentence he puts all the negativities in front of the conjunction then he puts all the positivities behind the conjunction let them say all the bad things first so my little children he says sin not negativity but if any man sins there is an advocate with the father thank god jesus reshuffled the sentence the wages of sin is death negativity but the gift of god is eternal life through jesus christ thank god jesus reshuffled the sentence persecuted but not forsaken cast down but not destroyed thank god jesus reshuffled the sentence the lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness but is long suffering towards us not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance thank god my jesus reshuffled the sentence weeping may endure only for a night but i say but I says but come on drop that but in the chat but joy comes in the morning thank god my jesus reshuffle the sentence and i do have 
my testimony to, to share this evening because I too I was sinking deep in sin far from the peaceful shore just like so many of us very deeply stained within sinking to rise no more but the master of the seas heard our despairing cry and from the gutters of sin he lifted us now how safe am I thank God my Jesus is willing to reshuffle your sentence he wants to put all your negativities in front of the conjunction are you listening to me let them say all the bad things first elder myers yes he was a criminal yes he was a homosexual yes she was a prostitute yes he was a rebel yes he was a smoker yes he was an adulterer yes he was a murderer yes he was a sinner yes but a sinner saved by grace let them say all the bad things first he did it for Naaman. Can I tell you, he will do it for you. I want you to picture with me in your minds right now, Naaman. And he stepped from his Syrian bathtub. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to picture him as he was getting ready to pat himself on the shoulder. Oh, he saw his biceps and he, and he saw his triceps and he felt so proud about his physiognomy. But right about that time, he observed a white crusty spot which looks like something strange, something he has never seen before. He tried to remove it, but he realized that the more he tried to remove it, the more it blisters and the more it bleeds. Yes, he went to his wife and he said, Sister Naaman, I'm not so sure what's happening, but I'm seeing something that doesn't look right. I would imagine a good wife said to Naaman, you better go to the doctor. In those days, they had the priest go check him out to see exactly what's the cause for your condition. I want you to listen to me well. Ladies and gentlemen, I can imagine having heard the doctor's report. Naaman knew right there and then that his case was hopeless. I'm going to move a little, so I'm going to ask my camera crew just to shift with me. Because as he moved, ladies and gentlemen, from one place to the other, he was hopeless. He felt that any time now, his entire skin would fall apart. But I want to tell somebody today, right now you might feel as your life is falling apart. You might feel as if your hope is falling apart. You might feel as if there is no use trying. You are on the very brink of giving up on your marriage, giving up on your children, giving up on your loved ones, giving up on your job. I want to say to you this evening, don't let up. Don't give in. Don't let go. My God is still on this throne. You might come to the end of your rope, but you're not at the end of your hope because my God is still alive and well. I don't know what the doctors would have told you last week. I don't know what surgery you're preparing for this week, but I want to tell you there is still a great physician who is very near. And he's a sympathizing Jesus. I don't know whose report will you believe. But when the doctor says you have one week to live or one month to live or a year to live. That's man report. But I ask the question this evening. Whose report will you believe? I will believe the report of the Lord. Yeah. I want you to picture him. Feeling hopeless. Feeling as if there is no need to try. But thank God. For a little girl who was taken into captivity from Israel and was made a maid in the home of Tate Naaman. She was just about eight or nine years of age. She was in captivity. She was enslaved, but God be praised. Her Christian principles weren't enslaved. No father was there. No mother was there. No Sabbath school teacher was there. Can I tell somebody this evening? Train up a child in the way they should go. When they get old, they will never, never, ne I want some parents to get back to the place. Can I speak to some Seventh-day Adventists this evening? You need to get back to the place where you call your family together at morning time. Sing so that your neighbor can hear. Pray so that your neighbor can hear. Sing so that your children can participate in praise and worship. Oh, happy the home where God is there. And love fills every breast. So that when our children 
get to the age when they have to leave home, they will remember that they made a covenant with God. Are you listening to me? We need some some parents we need some mothers we need some fathers we need some aunts we need some uncles we need some grandmas and some grandpas who will instill and inculcate in the lives of their children good values and attitudes won't you say amen are you listening to me so the bible tells me that a little girl whispered in Naaman's wife ears and said to her madam i wish that my Lord was somewhere in Samaria. He was somewhere back home because if he was there back home, I know that the prophets there, the pastors there would recover him of his leprosy. Can I tell you something this evening? Your case is not a hopeless case. It's a hopeless case without Jesus. But as long as you're connected to Jesus, the source of all hope, your case is a hopeful case. It is not over until it is over. And as long as God is still on his throne, I challenge you this evening, dry up your tears. Square your shoulders back. Your miracle is about to happen. Won't you say amen? I want you to picture. I want you to picture. After Naaman would have heard all of this, a letter was quickly prepared and sent to the king of Syria. Now, when the king of Syria got the letter, which states clearly that we are sending Naaman to you. And all we want you to do for Naaman is to recover Naaman of his leprosy. The Bible says when the king, when the king got this letter, when the king of Israel got the letter, he was so upset. He got so upset that he started to tear his robes off. His robe was being torn off. Now when a king tears off his robe, it's a sign of depression. It's a sign of helplessness. It's a sign of hopelessness. When Elisha the prophet heard that the king is upset and the king is depressed and the king is disoriented and disenchanted, Elisha sent a message, tell Naaman to come to me so that he will know that there is still a prophet. Come on, somebody. Verse, verse, verse 8. That there is still a prophet in Israel. Amen. Now, my brothers and sisters, verse 9 tells me that Naaman came with his horses. And he came with his chariots. And he came, and he came, and he stopped at the door of Elisha. Now, there are some of us, we think we are so important. We think that we are so big. We believe that everything must stop. The show must stop when we enter the room. Oh, Naaman felt that Elisha would come out and recover him on the spot from his leprosy. But no, 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 no. Uh, Elisha said, tell him. Yes. Sent a servant. Just tell him to go wash in Jordan River. Oh, Naaman got so upset because Abana and Farpar and all the rivers of Damascus had cleaner water than the one in Jordan. But may I suggest quickly that the healing was not in the water. The healing was reserved in obedience. And I want to say to some people this evening that there are some victories you will never win. There are some mountains you will never be able to climb. There are some hurdles you won't be able to cross. There are some opportunities that will not come your way. There are some doors will, that will never be open until we learn to trust and and obey Jesus are you listening to me so the Bible tells me that he got vexed he got upset he was a great man he allowed his greatness to get in the way of humility I want to teach somebody something tonight you better humble yourself take it easy the only big man in the place is not you the only big person in the house is Jesus you can't outlive him and you can't live without him. So the Bible tells me, brothers and sisters, that he was told by the prophet, go wash, go dip yourself in Jordan. How many times? I can't hear you. How many times? Go dip yourself 
in Jordan seven times. I wish I had time this evening, but the hour is far spent. But I want to say to somebody that seven is still God's perfect number. I want to tell somebody that every time you see seven in the Bible, it's a sign of completeness. Are we together? You must have heard about the seventh day Sabbath. You must have heard about the seven churches, the seven candlesticks. There are sevens in the Bible right through and through. Jesus, ladies and gentlemen, whenever he heals, come on somebody, he heals completely. When Naaman looked at dirty Jordan, he became so angry. Matter of fact, he started to walk away. I am not going to dip in that dirty water. Can I, can I say something? It's not in my notes. Because there are some folks who are out there saying, I can't come to any church right now. There are too many hypocrites in the church. But may I say to you right now, wherever you are, it is far worse than the church. There are some hypocrites in the church. But if you want to be saved in God's kingdom, you better press past some hypocrites. Come into the church and show the hypocrites how to live because Jesus is in the church. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I want you to picture me very, very well right now. Picture the scene. Naaman was getting ready to walk away. A matter of fact, he started to walk away. He couldn't see himself as a great man. That mighty man of valor war, dipping in dirty Jordan. He had men, great men of war surrounding him, escorting him. He commanded them. When he gives a command, they moved swiftly. Now he must succumb. And he must now allow himself to be instructed by a prophet. Can I tell somebody? God still speaks to us. And sometimes uh, the good counsel that we get, it might not come from a professor, but it might come from an aged person who would have been there and done that. When they say, this is the way, walk ye in it, understand that it is for your own good. Yes. And when God asks you to do something, it must be that you stand to benefit, won't you say amen? When God asks you to give up something, it means that he has a better package for you. I'm talking to some persons out there. Because when God says stop the smoking, when God says stop the sinning, when God says stop the prostitution, when God says stop it, stop the rebellion, when God says stop, it means that he has a better plan for your life. Come on, somebody say amen. And I want to say to you, brothers and sisters, don't be fooled. In this life, many are amassing wealth. In this life, many are doing their own thing. Unconcerned about the good news of salvation. Unconcerned about the gospel of hope. There are some who are busy trying to find the right partner. Uh, uh, the, the boyfriend, uh, the girlfriend. They, they are busy trying to do this and that. But I want to remind somebody. You can go to heaven without wealth, without fame, without money, without friends, without husband, without wife, without boyfriend, without girlfriend. But you can't get to heaven without Jesus so Naaman listen to that servant who came up close to him I said master if you were told to do something great okay you're a man of greatness you would have done it all the prophet said is to just go dip in Jordan just seven times it is good to have some friends it is good to have some associates who will direct us, who will encourage us, who will guide us, who will counsel us to walk in the path of righteousness. Come on, somebody say amen. You need to surround yourself with positive influence. Persons who will uplift you, will, who will help you to, to climb a little higher. Come on, somebody say amen. Oh, my brothers and sisters, Naaman, though uncomfortable, decided to hear the word and the counsel of his servant. And so he went by the Jordan. He stepped into the Jordan. Oh, Pastor Dennis, I believe that when he felt that mud with those worms and, and all those, 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 those small creatures are crawling up his, 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 his feet, I, I, I believe that somewhere in Naaman's mind, does this make any sense? I believe he was saying to myself, it makes no sense to go any further. But the Lord says, the servant of the Lord says, 
Seven times. Seven times. Seven times. I want to say something to somebody tonight. You say you love him. Obey him. You, you say you love him. Trust him. Oh, you say, oh, Pastor, I'm not, a, I'm not a bad person. Well, I have news for you. While Jesus is coming back for good persons, he's coming back for those of us who would have made a covenant with him by sacrifice. He that believeth and is baptized, the same shall be saved. There are many who will go to hell with good intention. There are many who will go to hell just believing. But may I say that believing alone won't help. For the favor he shows and the joys he bestows are for those who will trust and obey. Ladies and gentlemen, he took his first step, the second, the third, the fourth, and the fifth, and the sixth. You would want to think that by now if something was really going to happen, at least there should be some, some signs to suggest that, listen, the next step you take, everything will be totally gone. But it says not six or six and a half. It is seven. It is not all. It is not part surrender. It is all to Jesus. I surrender. If you really love him and if you want to be a part of God's kingdom, you better leave some things behind. You better step up by faith. You're going to say, Jesus, I don't know what my future holds. I don't know what that boyfriend is going to say. I don't know what that girlfriend is going to say. We have been together for so many years and yet we have not yet gotten married. I am not prepared to go another mile. I want Jesus to walk with me. I want Jesus to live in my life. I want to be a part of God's kingdom. Can I tell some it pays to obey Jesus it pays to obey him by the way if Jesus is all that you have you can take the whole world but give me Jesus because all it takes to go to heaven is Jesus when he took the seventh dip praise the Lord the Bible tells me that his flesh became like a new born baby i don't know brothers and sisters but i can picture right now naaman's expression when he looked at his hand his hands were new when he looked at his feet his feet were too. I can't imagine, ladies and gentlemen, that he looked up into the skies. He looked around. He saw all those persons looking on. I imagine Naaman a break out in singing the song. Oh, no, I see the crimson wave, the fountain deep and wide. Jesus, my Lord, mighty to save, points to his wounded side. The cleansing stream. I see, I see. I plunged and oh, it cleanseth me. Oh, praise the Lord. It cleanseth me. It cleanseth me. Yes, cleanseth me. Oh, brothers and sisters, you can say now anything that you want to say about Naaman. Notice that his sentence has been reshuffled. Let, let them say all the bad things first. Naaman was a leper. Naaman had disease. Naaman's skin was de decomposing. Naaman uh, was sick unto death. But let them say all the bad things first. And tonight Jesus wants to reshuffle your sentence. When we started out, it was Naaman, the honorable man. Naaman, the great man of valor. But he was a leper. The sentence was reshuffled. Now Naaman can walk with his head up high because he has been transformed. He has been healed. He has been touched by the love of Jesus. Tonight, Jesus wants to heal your situation. Persons might know some bad things about you, but that's all right. They might know you as a rebel. They might know you as an adulterer. They might know you as a thief. They might know you as a murderer. Let them say the bad things first. Yes, that's the life he used to live. That's how she used to live. But love lifted me. I found Jesus. I'm no longer slave to sin. The life that I used to live. I will live it no more. The things I used to do, I will do them more, no more. The places I used to go, I will go them no more. For it's a great change. Your sentence doesn't have to read the same way. It has been read and over the past umpteen years. The time has come 
for you to allow Jesus to reshuffle that sentence. Let him put all the negativities in front of the conjunction. And then put all the positivities behind. Let them say all the bad things first. Then the boat will come in. But he's a sinner saved by grace. What Jesus did for Naaman, he can do it for you. What a day when we all see Jesus. Come on, somebody. If you want to get there, if you want to be a part of God's kingdom, if you want to walk through those gates into the city, you better go to Jesus like Naaman. You better go for your cleansing. You better go and, 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 and dip in that Jordan. May I suggest, ladies and gentlemen, that the Jordan is still waiting. He that believeth, and is baptized. Jesus said to Nicodemus, Nicodemus, you're a good guy. You're a decent guy. But you must be born again. Good looks cannot save you. Money in your pocket cannot save you. Friends cannot save you. By the way, when we're dying, we're dying one by one. And if you're going to hell, You'll be going one by one. And if you're going to heaven, you'll be going one by one. It's a personal choice. Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Today, not tomorrow. We guess about tomorrow. Yesterday is a cancel check. Tomorrow is a promissory note. But today is life cash. Today is life cash. Brother Andrew, I want you to sing for me right now. And as he sings that song, I don't know who you are, but I pray that you will click on that link. Register your name in that, on that card. Let us get in touch with you. Yes, you. You on that bed. You in that couch. You on the veranda. You in your living room. Yes, you. You, young lady, yes, you, young man, you feel that you are hopeless. There is hope for you tonight. Sing that song. Life carried me alone. In my soul, I yearn to follow God, but knew I'd never be so strong. I look hard at this world to see how heaven could be gained. Just to end where I began, where all human effort would be in vain. Were it not grace I could tell you where I'd be wandering down some pointless road to nowhere with my salvation up to me and I know how that would go God loves you Yes, he loves you. The many battles I would face. Don't give up. No, don't give up. Don't give up. Don't those don't, don't throw in the towel. There is hope. But losing if the Naaman race, could be cleansed, if Naaman could be healed of his leprosy. For grace. There is hope for you. There is hope for you. Don't give up on that marriage. Oh, don't give up on that spouse. Don't give up on so that, here is that husband, that wife. Don't give up on your grace. children. Don't give up. Don't give up on life. Express with you might be sick. My don't give up. Don't give up tonight. Don't give up tonight. To that here is hope. Who took my place. But as you start a course. As you position yourself, as you as you listen to the word tonight, why not give Jesus a chance? Why not why not let go and let God? Why not say, Lord, I've tried everything and 
and everything would have failed. I'm you trying to give no Jesus a chance tonight. Give him a chance. So I would not give him a chance tonight. Lost. Young man, just give him a chance. Were he not loves the sinner, but he hates the sin. He loves the rebel, but he hates the rebellion. He loves the homosexual, but he hates the homosexual tendencies and behaviors. Yes, Jesus loves you. He loves the criminal, but he hates the crime. Jesus loves you. And guess what? There's a place reserved in heaven for all of us. But all you need to do is to say, Lord, take my life. Take my heart. And if you give him your heart, if you give him your life, he will give you his father's kingdom. Won't you give him a chance this evening? You can't outlive him. But thank God for grace this evening. Because grace will always be greater. Grace will always be greater. Dr. Dennis, we're happy that you have graced us with your presence. I invite you now, sir, just to pray a special prayer for all of God's people, those who have not yet given their hearts to Jesus. Some are online. We invite you just to pray a prayer of deliverance that they will know tonight that the good Lord that we serve wants to reshuffle and transform their sentence or their sentences. Bow your heads as we pray. Amen, amen. I invite you to join me at this time in prayer. Just bow you, your heads wherever you are as we seek the Lord in prayer. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Gracious, loving, heavenly Father, we thank you tonight once more for the preaching of the gospel of salvation. Some might consider it to be foolishness, but to those of us who are saved, it is the power of God unto salvation. We are thankful for the mighty way in which you have used your manservant, reminding us that even though sometimes it might seem so hopeless, and we are down in the dull drum and conundrum, cast out because of sin, there is grace of sal and salvation in Jesus Christ, our Lord. There is gleanings of hope tonight. That young lady who is in shocking up with that man. That young man who is addicted to drugs. That individual who has no financial resources and feels as if there is no way out and they are hopeless. There is hope in Jesus. That individual who have received that terminal illness diagnosis. Oh Lord, there are so many persons tonight who feel as if there is no hope. But we are reminded that when Jesus steps into our sentence, he turns the darkness into light. He turns the gloom into hope and the but makes the difference. Yes, once I was a drunkard. Yes, I was a gunman. Yes, I was in lotto scamming. Yes, I was a criminal. But now I am a sinner saved by grace. Thank you, Jesus, for the reminder that there is hope, that there is salvation, that there is victory in the mighty name of Jesus. And tonight, Heavenly Father, there is that individual who is wondering, should I take this step? Should I make this decision? Will I be able to make it? Tonight is the night. This is the hour of salvation. We pray, Heavenly Father, that through the various platform, through the various media platform, that you will reach out by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you will touch that young man, that you will touch that young lady, that you will touch that woman, that you will touch that man, and that you will bring them in tears and repentance to the foot of the cross. Help them that there is no time like tonight to give their hearts to Jesus. Tonight is a night of victory. 
thank you for the mighty way in which you have used your servant. And we look forward, Heavenly Father, for you using him continually as he goes through the rest of this week and throughout this program. Magnify your name through him and help, Heavenly Father, that many souls will come to know Jesus, whom to know is life everlasting. Thank you for your presence with us this evening. Continue to bless us and keep us faithful and true to you until that day when you shall come in the clouds of glory. May we all make our calling and election sure that we will be ready to meet you in peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. But, yes, so we would have just heard the sermon titled But by Pastor Kevin Barnaby. Powerful sermon indeed. And um, we, we felt like we were in not just church, but an English class, as we would have been reminded that but is a contrasting uh, conjunction. And usually it starts off with the, the, the positive first, and then you would have the negative after. And he illustrated this when he took us through the story of Naaman, who was a mighty man of Syria, but he had leprosy. He also told us this evening in his sermon that, you know, we are to be careful how we treat people. We are to be careful because sickness is no respecter of persons. Uh, Naaman was, 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 had the highest position, one of the highest position in the army in this country. And yet still, he was struck down with leprosy. This evening, we'd have also heard that sin is deadly. Sin is deceptive. Sin is destructive. Stay away from sin. But he also offered us hope as he reminded us about the sin-pardoning Savior, Jesus Christ, who when we come in contact with him, our sentence will be reshuffled. It will be restructured and the negative will come first and then the positive. So they will say that you were first this evil person. You are such an unkind individual. You, 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 you are destined for, for, for destruction. But having come in contact with Jesus Christ, you are now a sinner saved by grace. What a powerful sermon this evening. I know that truly our hearts have been blessed as we listened to the words of God. Coming from our manservant, coming from his manservant, Pastor Barnaby. The blessing continues. As you step out for your week, I, I wish for you a wonderful week. I wish for you a blessed week. But please know, join us right here again. Gleanings of Hope online evangelistic series on Wednesday evening at 6.30 p.m. where the blessings will continue. I'm your host, Keisha Denisior Dennis. God bless you all. Were it not for grace I could tell you where I'd be Wandering down some pointless road to nowhere With my salvation up to me and I know how that would go The many battles I would face For